Hello everyone and welcome to Collection Reflection. I hope you had a great Thanksgiving and I'm glad you're here with me today. On this reflection we will be taking a look at the BST AXN version of Bebop from the Ninja Turtles. If we move the figure out of the way for now we can take a nicer, closer look at the packaging. There's a nice little read up for Bebop. Here you can see the accessories that he comes with. 31 points of articulation. There's the side and the other. And there's the front. And now we have the figure in front of us yet again. Let's bring him closer to the camera so that we can look at all the wonderful sculpt and detail. In my opinion, Bebop looks like he's ripped straight from the video game or the comic books. Super colorful, super 80s looking. Which reminds me, have any of you played the Cowabunga Collection? Is it worth it? Should I get it? I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about that. But let's focus on the figure for now. You can see his nice painted teeth and the little nose ring is painted silver. They painted his grenades. Even the bullets in his uh, bandolier are painted. You can see that necklace and the shells on his uh, shoulders. Even his hair, they painted his hair tie. I got a little paint mishap there though. The face, you can even see little tufts of fur on the cheeks. And those fun retro style glasses, same color as his purple mohawk. He has a asymmetrical design, so his right hand has this nice spiked bracelet and on his left it's going to be just this chain similar to the belt that he's wearing and he's got this random metal band on his thigh I thought that would have been really cool if they would have been able to uh, add a holster or something for some of the weapons that he comes with but maybe this is just the design of the character The pants are well done, but I really like these shoes. The shoes make the pig. And they also make me feel very nostalgic for some reason. Take a look at those muscles. He looks like your classic jock bully, but with a mutated warthog face. The vest, bandolier, and necklace are all rubber and removable but the shells are not. They are sculpted onto his shoulders. If you want to know what he looks like without all this gear on, stay tuned. But for now, let's check out his articulation. His head is on a ball post, so it can go 360, but his hair makes it more difficult. Since it's rubber, you can force it across. Shoulders are hindered by the shell. They go about that far out, but can spin 360 just fine. 360 bicep swivel. Double jointed elbows that go out less than 90. All of his wrists have a swivel and the high five hinge. He has a ball post in the diaphragm which means it can swivel 360, but it is hindered just because of the way that it's all sculpted. 360 waist swivel, but, oh, maybe you're not supposed to swivel it. When putting the parts back together, I always expect to hear a pop to know that I pushed it in all the way. With this figure, I don't hear any single pop. You can do the pig splits out to there and kick forward that far. This is a rubberized piece, so it will move out of the way. 
double jointed pinless knees. Ankle goes down that far, up that far, and swivels 360. How about we take a look at his accessories? Bebop comes with three sets of hands, two heads, and three weapons. I like to imagine this as Bebop's completely human form, besides those hands, without all of his other gear on. In order to take off all of his accessories, you're going to first have to pop his arm out of the socket which is not something that I would recommend you doing with your action figures unless you feel comfortable with taking them apart already. After that, you can just remove all the extra rubber pieces and then pop the arm back into place. See here what his open palm hands look like? And the fists. Swap them out, and you just grab the hand and pull. Take your new hand and just pop it right in. Here's his gripping hand. And here he is holding one of his weapons. You can take a closer look at his drill gun. I keep calling it a drill gun in my head. I don't know if it's just like a regular power drill or if it's something that shoots screws at people. I don't know. Seems to be casted out of black plastic and then painted silver. Here's the knife accessory he comes with. You can see that the blade looks chipped and worn like it's... This is not a new knife. He's used it in some battles before. Maybe trying to carve up some toitles. And here's the last weapon he comes with. It's supposedly a trash can lid that he just uses as a shield. I thought you might be able to slip his fingers through the uh, the lid there, but the way his hand is shaped, you can't really do it. You can have it dangle there on his fingertips, but it doesn't really stay if you wiggle it around too much. However, you can put it in his gripping hands, and that way he can hold it just fine. Here he is with his human head. You can see what that looks like. In my opinion, it makes his body look a little too bulky for his smaller human head, but that makes sense. He's got to bulk up when he gets mutated, and they didn't want to give him a thin little body to go with his nice pig head, so they had to make a decision, and I think they made the right one. I was really surprised to find out that they were even going to include a human version for Beep Up, because I've never seen one done in action figure form before, so I was very impressed with that. What do you say we look at some comparisons? Let's start off with some turtles. From the 2012 animated series, we have Michelangelo and Donatello, which are the shortest and tallest Ninja Turtles of that version. And you can see that Bebop is taller than both of them, so they kind of pair pretty well. Here we have a couple of versions of Raphael from the live-action CGI second Ninja Turtles movie, and from the BST AXN line. Let's look at the best action versions of these characters just a little bit closer. Because I'm not sure what they're going for as far as scale. Because Bebop is normally bigger than the Ninja Turtles, but here, he is still a little bit taller with his mohawk. But as far as bulk goes, they seem to be about the same. 
But maybe it's just the turtle's shell that makes them look so much bigger and thicker than the other BST figures. From the Power Rangers Lightning Collection, we have Morphed Leonardo and Green Ranger Shredder, whose review you can check out on my channel after this one. Since there are two different toy lines, one is the 6 inch scale and the other being a 5 inch scale, I don't think Bebop is going to fit into your Lightning Collection. Here we have a couple of Transformers from the Cyberverse line, Thunderhowl, and from the War for Cybertron Kingdom, we have Rhinox. Since I don't have a Rocksteady, I thought Rhinox would be a great stand-in. I'm not sure if Bebop and Rocksteady are supposed to be the same height. You would think one being a Warthog and one being a Rhino, they'd be different sizes. So I think this actually works out pretty well. Here are a couple more best action figures. We have the BSTAXN Ang and Itachi. It seems like Ang is actually the tallest out of the three, but they're all very roughly the same height. From DC Spin Master, we have King Shark and Bronze Tiger. Both of these are four inch action figures and I thought they both kind of fit in with the animal mutated theme that a lot of the Ninja Turtle enemies seem to have. I think these two would be great to watch the Ninja Turtles go up against. Here we have a couple of members from the Final Faction toy line. Here's a Karn Brute and Ruck with his Rampage armor. Both of these figures I have customized to increase their articulation. These are also 4 inch action figures and Bebop is taller than both. And finally we have Human Bebop compared with the massiveness known as Pumpkin Rapper's Head. We made it to the end of the video, where now I'm going to share my final thoughts about Bebop. I think this is a wonderful figure. The sculpt, the articulation, and the accessories are all very well done in my opinion. I think this is also a better figure than the Turtles, which is odd. Usually when a Ninja Turtle line comes out, the turtles are the main focus, so they get the most attention, and they're usually made better. But in this case, I feel like Bebop blows them all out of the water. I feel like this is a huge leap in the right direction for BST AXN. And I hope to find Rocksteady soon, because this figure definitely needs his partner in crime. So if you enjoy the Ninja Turtles, or you're just trying to complete this set, this figure is a must-have in my opinion. If you enjoyed any part of this video, please do me a favor. You don't have to worry about liking this video. You don't even have to subscribe to this video. All I'm asking you to do is share this video with at least one person that you think might get a kick out of it. I genuinely appreciate all of you for making it this far into the video. If you're new to my channel, don't worry, because I got plenty of videos that you can go back and check out. Maybe they're not the best, but hopefully they're getting better. I hope you all had a nice chuckle on Thanksgiving, and I hope you try to be nice to somebody. I'll see you next time.